Welcome back to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm Satoli. Today I'm in eastern Kentucky near Greenup, the town of Greenup, and I'm at one of the oldest bridges here in Kentucky. I believe it's the oldest bridge, and Bill Seacrest is going to tell us all about it. How you doing, Bill? I'm doing fine. I'm a little cold here. <laughs> it is chilly this morning, yes, isn't it? Yes. <clears throat> so tell me about this bridge. You live just right down the road, right? Yes, in uh, 1849, uh, my great great grandfather, uh, B. F. Bennett, Benjamin Franklin Bennett, came down from uh, Ohio, and he purchased 1,000 acres around here. And it, this uh, thousand acres had the globe furnace on it, which was an iron ore furnace, and. Uh, it sets back on the other side of the bridge here. And they tried to operate that for about three years and uh, realized they couldn't make any money on it. So they uh, <clears throat> decided to do something different. That was BF and his brother Parmalee. So they came down over here and they dammed up this, this is a, called a creek mm -hmm. because it's 99 miles long. It's, and they, I guess you gotta be a river to be uh, more than that. Tigert's Creek, and they dammed that up and built a grist mill on the other side of the of the creek. And uh, but then they realized that they could only make money two months out of the year, grinding corn and wheat. Right. And uh, so they made put on some more belts and pulleys, and uh, made a sawmill. And uh, they started sawing lumber, and that turned out to be really uh, fruitful because. The settlers coming across the Appalachian Mountains, they could settle in here and they could build a, a log house, you know, with the trees and what have it, but they couldn't build a log table or log chairs, so they needed lumber. And uh, so he was selling lumber, and then he realized that half of his customers potentially were on the other side of the creek. And it's 99 miles long and there's no bridge. You have to go to a low-level fording place. Right, right. So he sawed the timbers and he built this bridge. And uh, <clears throat> that was, the bridge was built in 1855. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> so it served everybody well. Uh, his business doubled because he could sell uh, lumber to people that lived on this side of the bridge and uh, what have you. And so they, he and his brother Parmalee, they were uh, here. And then they had the Civil War, and as I understand it, they flipped a coin to see who would go and who would stay. No kidding. And uh, so uh, B.F. had to go to war, and uh, so he's there fighting for the Union. Mm -hmm. He's on the south of the uh, of the uh, <clears throat> Mason Dixon the line. Mason Dixon line, but he fought for the Union. But he he got injured in his leg in 1870. He uh, census he's listed as a cripple. But uh, anyway, his, uh, as I understand it, his, uh, <clears throat> his wife decided that he needed to do something because he was not able to get around very, very good. So she uh, sheared the sheep and spun the wool and, and uh, knitted some socks and went over to Portsmouth, Ohio and sold the socks over there. And she used that money and bought him a, a, a law book. And so he studied the law book and took the bar exam and became a lawyer. Really? So now he's up in Greenup and he's a lawyer, but he deals mainly in real estate. Okay. He's buying and selling different pieces of uh, <clears throat> the property and, and uh, going to the tax sales and what have you. Matter of fact, he bought the uh, a thousand, uh, I'm sorry, it was a 600 acres. He bought Carter Caves. Carter Cave yeah, State yeah, Park, yeah. He, he bought that, he owned that, and uh, he sold it to this guy uh, for $10,000, and that guy is from West Virginia, and, and six months later, he, he in turn sold it to somebody else for $50,000. <laughs> that, that was a big income. That was big income, but uh, I have the deeds up at my house uh, showing that he had that 600 acres and what have you. So uh, anyway, he uh, just continued on and, and uh, uh, just 
was pretty active, you know, in the, in the local politics. And he was elected to the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. And he went down to Frankfurt, and he was one of the uh, committee men that rewrote the uh, uh, Constitution of the state of Kentucky. I think that was in 1897. And uh, he, he died in uh, 1914 uh, up in Greenup. He eventually had moved up there, built a house up there. At any rate, uh, you can look down the, the down creek here and you can see the remnants of the dam that he had built when he built his grist mill. Mm -hmm. And parts of the, uh, the lumber that you see in the photograph here, you see the lumber pieces going across. The lumber and stone and gravel are all still there. Okay. And it's a really attractive fishing hole. People park here and they can walk down there and, and go out and they, they fish and the, there's a deep where the where the water came over the dam, it made a big Ooh, hole. Yeah. And so it's the real that's the deepest part around here. And I mean you can go out here and, and walk across, you right, know, right. up to your waist, but you can't walk across there. It's over your head. So in the mill there's nothing left. There's no foundation no, or anything. Nothing it's there. all gone. Nothing there. And you were telling me an interesting story before about the, well, first off, you were talking about the uh, iron furnace. Yes. Let, let's talk a little bit about the iron furnace for the people that don't know what the iron furnace is Yeah, for. The, the globe furnace uh, stood back here and uh, they made iron ore. And like I say, uh, BF and his brother tried for about three years, but uh, about that time, the Bessemer system came in down in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, mm -hmm. and that put all the iron ore furnaces out of business, so to speak. They couldn't compete. And the old iron ore furnaces, they they were built somewhat like a pyramid, correct? Yes, and uh, they, they used the local uh, uh, iron ore clay and and the coal and what have you to make their, their uh, stuff out of. I've got uh, uh, pieces I can show you up at the house some of the old uh, waste people that had come along and what have you. Right. But eventually the furnace set there and then uh, when BF decided that he had needed to build a bridge, uh, they tore down the furnace block by block. If you look over here and you can see it's the foundation on each side of the bridge and they used those stones to make the foundation for each side of the bridge. The stone bridge abutments are from the uh, iron From the iron ore furnace. furnace. Okay. That's the globe furnace. And uh, all that you see now over there is just a mound of earth. Right. You know, that's uh, <clears throat> there and what have you. I'm gonna take you, uh, if, it's, if it's all right with you, out and show you the uh, New Hampshire furnace. Mm -hmm. It's out on Brushy Creek. And uh, I own that. Oh, do you? Uh, and it's the only furnace around here in, in Ohio or Kentucky that uh, you can actually walk inside. It's, okay. it's complete standing. All the other furnaces are one side's tore down and right. what have you. They just, they're just stones laying there. And when were they originally built? Oh, in the uh, uh, 1830s, thereabouts. Okay. We, you can, we all read the sign up there and it'll tell you okay. uh, what, uh, when the New Hampshire furnace was, was built. Okay. And... Uh, uh, everything. Um, and did we but, discuss how long this is? They, they, uh, the sign used to say, there was a sign around here we had, but uh, they measure the roof. It's 195 feet long. Okay. And uh, they don't measure down at the floor, they measure no, at the roof, the right. peaks. And uh, we've got uh, uh, wooden signs here from Graff Brothers. This is from Graff Brothers and it's engraved and uh, it tells you that this is the oldest, longest single span. There's no support in the middle. Mm -hmm. Single span covered bridge open to traffic in the world. Okay. And uh, so that's, that's a pretty good feat. Uh, when they restored it, they were gonna come back and uh, uh, put it back on the same foundation as they had before. And uh, I had previously made a pitch to raise the level of the bridge because this creek gets up and was flowing through sure. the through the creek. Uh, uh, one time it was six feet high in the old bridge, the water. And uh, 
the state was giving me uh, uh, the reasons. They wrote me a letter and it says, due to the hydraulics of the water and the, the, going around the bridge and so forth. And I said, you know, the water is not supposed to go around the bridge. It's supposed to go <laughs> under the bridge. So I wrote a, and a good, the good Lord helped me. Uh, we had a big rain and the creek was up and, and it was right at the bottom of, of the bridge. And I took a photograph of it and sent that to the Daily Independent, the newspaper, and wrote a letter. And I said, uh, here, I would like to find the name of the person down in, in uh, the Department of Transportation who says that the bridge doesn't need to be raised. Here we're going to put a million dollar bridge down and see it washed away. You know, so they, they couldn't stand that and they, they raised it three feet. So Did they? That's, you, you'll see on the other side, there's some concrete setting on top of the stones. Right. And that's what they used as a basis to raise the right. bridge before okay. they set it back down. Okay. Okay. And uh, what have you. But the beams, we got the original beams in there uh, from the, the original bridge built in 1855. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just measured one in there. It was approximately 52 feet long. And, uh, but there's lots of original beams still here. But there wasn't enough local lumber or local trees to make a beam 52 feet long, you know, 12 inches square, what have you. So they had to go to the Department of Transportation, had to go to Oregon. When to, they restored this. When they restored it and get uh, Oregon spruce. Mm -hmm. So that you'll find some similar sized uh, beams in here, uh, long and, and width, what have you, but they're from Oregon. And what, were wrong, what was wrong with the old beams? Were they rotted or? Uh, some of them had yeah, you know, just Crap. dried out and uh, what have you, but uh, because they were uh, 140 years old. Sure. Uh, you know, when it was restored, well, 160 years old when it was restored, something mm -hmm. like that. When they, uh, they had let out the, uh, <clears throat> the forecast of repairing and restoring the covered bridges, and they pointed out in the article that they were going to do the Old Town Covered Bridge first. And I was all upset. Why are they doing theirs first? Mine should be first, you know, that type of thing. But I'm so glad that theirs was first. <laughs> because they learned something about uh, restoring bridges. And they, uh, they, well, so when they let the contract out for this one, they specified that it had to have as big of an arch as, as was possible. In the center. In the center. Right. And the reason of that is because the Old Town Bridge didn't have that. They built it flat, and it's like this now, and you can't drive across it. Right. It's closed to traffic. And because so, it's sagging. It's sagging. Yeah. And, and it has the center support as well. Oh, does it? Yes. And uh, so it's not usable. So I was really glad that, <laughs> that I, was, I was last, so to speak, you know, in getting this bridge uh, done. And there's only, what, 10 or 11 bridges left in Kentucky? There was 13, and I understand, and uh, Fleming County calls it the covered bridge capital of Kentucky because they had three. And, uh, uh, but theirs are short and small and nothing compared uh, to this one. Yeah. And then Washington County, they just lost one last year, the only one they had. Uh, that was torched by an arsonist, I believe. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, these things, these things happen. Uh, yeah. We've, uh, ours has been sprayed with fire retardant. Right. And uh, uh, what have yeah. you. I, uh, I've got some security cameras in there. I had to put two on this side. Uh, one was a fancy one to get the uh, license plate numbers because the the other ones uh, the li you could see the car and, the, and it had a license plate but you couldn't read, read the, the, the numbers right but now we can read the numbers Good and, deal. Uh, what have you uh, we have electricity on the bridge uh, because we have dinner on the bridge and we it stays so late do we have to have lights so and when do you have that dinner? Uh, typically, we've had 15 of them, um, and, and uh, that's the second uh, weekend in June. Okay. Is typically when it is. 
the last three years we haven't had one uh, because of the COVID-19. COVID, yeah. and, uh, and this year we couldn't get our help in. The cook, she lives in Nashville, Tennessee, and, and she's got all of the towels for the table. Well, well, this thing is really fancy. I mean, we have linens, you know, on the tables, <laughs> and we have silverware, not plastic. It's silver, and we eat off of uh, China, you know, plates. Do you? Uh, so she's, she has all the plates and the silverware and the, and the napkins and cloth napkins, you yeah. know, and, yeah. uh, and uh, tablecloths and what have you. And we restrict it. You know, see the sign? It says three tons. They put that back there because that's the way the original bridge had three sure. tons. But actually... Uh, I was told by the lady down at the Department of Transportation in Flemingsburg that she did a, a, a calculated with thing, and she says this one is 28,000 pounds. Is it? Okay. So we don't have that posted any place, but uh, I restrict the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the participants for dinner on the bridge to 100 people because then with all the tables and the, and the help and the works and so forth sure uh i'm that's my approach to twenty eight thousand pounds i understand and uh what have you and we have this is a dry county well it was dry uh they recently voted it wet but uh um we we cook everything in the in the smoked house back there by the by the barn and uh um <clears throat> uh, so we have all kinds of fancy food. It's thirty-five dollars to to eat, mm -hmm. but that includes wine. Okay. But we can't sell the wine. We have free wine tasting. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, that's just part of it. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Uh. Well, I don't. Oh. You look on here, the decorations, Halloween's coming. Mm -hmm. And so we put out, we need to get some more pumpkins. Uh, that's the reason I had, I got the uh, extra camera because people would stop and steal the pumpkins. And I couldn't read the, place, the license plate on their car. But, uh, <clears throat> but I caught them doing that with this other camera. Yeah. And uh, they, had, they had to, they put charges on them and they, uh, I have to forget what was involved but anyway they had to uh, bring out some more it was a a woman and a guy and they took stole the pumpkins and uh, but we we found them you know with the license plate and they had to replace them and now nobody bothers them anymore <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> but the uh <clears throat> those are gourds i call them my snake gourds right and i took those to the high school and the uh students in the art class they painted them with the put a a mouth and eyes on snakes. Sure. And uh, they look good. Bill, thanks again for helping us out. I appreciate it. And I appreciate all the information that you gave us about the bridge. It's beautiful. Hopefully it'll last another 160 years. Hope so too. Good. And thank you for watching another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. And remember, remember travel, travel slowly, slowly and, and stop, stop often. often. See you next time. Mm -hmm.